one of the things that is happening. Mere oxygen, patients cannot have it. The energy you use running around the hospital to get resources is far more than the energy you put in taking care of the patient. That is what is happening. more on this uh, shortage of materials. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I just want to take one minute and say something about it. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Fatma Kasama. I'm the vice president. I decided to just sit behind um, just to be part of the general members. So talking about this uh, shortage of materials, this is something that has been ongoing since we joined the health system. It's something that has become normal in the health system. The government doesn't really care. Ministry of Health does not care. Hospital administrations or hospital management, who we think will work with us, they don't really care. I'll take an example uh, for myself. I have some of my colleagues here. I work in the ICU and the accident emergency unit. You come to work, you have one piece of glove that you will use to give medication for the whole ward. You can have a patient of 50, a ward of 15 patients or 20, you will use one glove to give medication. When you come to uh, syringes, I was on night duties. We will go to the duty room. They will count how many patients do you have in your ward. For example, if you have 10 patients, they will give you 10 syringes, needle and string. I will use one needle and string for your 10 p.m. medication. I'll keep it for the 12 a.m. medication and keep it again for the 6 a.m. medication for one patient. I'll put you at risk, put the other patients at risk, and put myself at risk. Sometimes we walk without gloves. I have cleaned a patient who messed up without gloves. My colleague is there, Sira. And what we got at the end of the month was they deducted $1,000 from our salaries because we could not have gloves to clean that patient. This is not just uh, about saying all over the country. <laughs> and when it comes to health equity in the Gambia, it's zero. Not everybody is equal when it comes to healthcare service in the Gambia. I've seen a couple of times, we have patients, they'll bring them into the ICU when they are not supposed to be there. The less privileged are dying somewhere when they need the service. But because you are from a, a high income or star, whatever class they categorize you, or you are from a VIP, either a minister or so, they bring you there, or you will need a resource that is not available in the hospital currently. But it is in the store. Because you are a nobody, you are poor, you, are not, you have no connection with anybody at the government level, Nobody will come from their house to bring out that resources that you need. We are all human beings. But if somebody from the ministry of government, whatever sector, or you are part of the, 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 the government facilities, it heads or whatever, as long as you are considered as VIP, somebody will come out from their home, whether it's 3 a.m. or 4 a.m., to, to bring out whatever resources you need and give it to you. But the, the lay person who is a less privileged person will not have that opportunity. So we lack gloves in the hospital. Medications are never available. Hospital beds are never available. So it's normal to go to a hospital in, in the Gambia without hospital uh, bed seats. But whenever somebody is coming from the ministry or the president is coming around, our so-called leaders will make so even A and E, the beds will have bed seats, which I feel is cheating. That is not supposed to be done. You know? Thank you. So I would just, I'm, I'm, I'm so emotional. I don't know why to talk like this, but I'm so, I would just end my talk here. This is my book. Can sit down.